All right, so we got ourselves a Honda CRV, right? And uh, we're gonna try to, we're, we're, we're gonna, we have, a, we have a lot of work to do here. This thing is a bit of a basket case. Um, so this has a blown head gasket, possibly. That is what the previous owner said to me. And uh, we're gonna try to figure it out. We're gonna do a couple things to test. We're gonna make an assessment of the engine and see, uh, you know, just the condition of everything. This is a, a four-cylinder uh, VTEC, I-VTEC 2.4 cylinder, dual overhead. And um, yeah, the uh, it's got a parasitic draw, so the batteries have to, you know, remove the battery out of the system for a bit. You know, I'll figure that out after we do the most important thing, which is the head gasket, possibly. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to check and see if this uh, has any coolant in it. And it is low or has little to none. So that's a good thing to, f to know. And then check and see what we have for oil. Oil is below the dot. See that? Below the two dots. So we're low in oil also. Okay. So. Yeah. And just make an assessment of this engine. First thing I'm going to do to try to get a, uh, an idea about this uh, head gasket. We're going to use. We're going to do it a couple ways. We're going to use this kit right here. And, uh, you'll see me set it up. The chemical in here will change color if it detects um, uh, exhaust fumes inside the, uh, the coolant. But we gotta fill this up with a little bit of water first. But I'm gonna use the same funnel, so we'll start with the coolant first. We're just gonna put water in it for now. Uh, I just need to uh, get a little bit of water in there, not too much, just enough to kinda like Fill it up so I can catch some fumes. So I can already see. All right, that's good. So we, ha we have enough. There's water in there now. We'll be able to uh, probably see, if, check the fumes from that. Oh, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of oil. We're not gonna put too much because we're not driving it. Just gonna test it. And then uh, start to tear it down. It looks a little gummed up in there too. So who knows? A little bit of oil. If I put like one quart, I think that's about all it needs. Just try not to blow up the engine, you know. So we're at the bottom of the, we're at the top, we're right above the bottom line, so. Probably like around a quarter and a half too low, so that's never a good sign. There we go. I'm keep this radiator cap off. Let's just talk about this test, right? We need to um, do a couple things. Uh, really nice instructions here. We want to. Make sure the water, the, I'm sorry, the um, coolant level is about two inches below the cap. And we want to turn on the engine, let it idle for a little bit, enough that the, uh, so the thermostat can open up. And so once the thermostat opens up, then the uh, coolant will be flowing around and then you'll be able to capture any sort of like, um, you know, fumes that are like in the system that from the engine in the combustion process. That's when you need a thermostat to, to start to, to open so the cooling can flow and then you can go ahead and conduct the test so we got to turn this on let it idle for a little bit watch your thermometer because you don't want this to overheat and damage the engine so 
uh, if you are concerned you have a, a blown head gasket, just make sure you uh, pay attention to that. Keep the uh, cap off the uh, radiator because you don't want the you don't want pressure to build up and then it'll get all hot and explode on you and burn you. Okay. You see how my coolant is uh, bubbling up. I think this head gasket is pretty much blown. That right there, those bubbles are from engine exhaust. And that's, that's, that's what this is, pretty sure. But we'll go ahead and test it so we can uh, get a proper verification. Almost there, see at the very bottom, right there. It's uh, telling us we're almost, almost heated up. So, uh, just gonna keep watching, waiting for the thermostat to crack open and let the fluid flow. Uh, those bubbles also, I'm not really sure, I'm kind of second guessing myself. They could have been also just like air because I added coolant to the system, but either way, we're gonna find out. So there are two fans on a Honda, right? Uh, this fan here is gonna be, I'm pretty sure it's for the uh, AC when you turn on the AC, that fan comes on. And that fan there, you can turn on when the thermometer and the engine thinks it's too hot and needs to start to cool itself. It's part of its strategy. So that's another, 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 um, what do you call it, uh, moment of clarity when you're, uh, the system is, uh, the thermostat's at least open. So you can look for that also. Alright, let's give this test a try. It's got to change from green to yellow, and that's how we know for sure we have a, a leak. Are you want to suck slowly? Watch the fluid, see what color it changes. So you can see that is very yellow. That is exactly what we didn't want to see, but we knew that was gonna happen anyway, right? So we have a blown head gasket. According to this block tester, that's what's happening right now. We'll turn off the engine and we'll try, we'll test it another way. All right, so we gotta disable the, the fuse that controls the fuel pump. And uh, we have a, uh, a fuse box, we need to get to position number two, which is the bottom left on this diagram here. And it's a 15 amp fuse for the fuse for the fuel pump. Uh, we need to do some tests, so it's gonna be here. So this is the, so I don't know if you got cut off or not, but uh, we'll look at the fuse box right here. We need to disable fuse number two, which is the bottom left there. And it's a 15 amp. And it's for the fuel pump. And we need to disable it. It's right up under here. You can see that right there. And that is on the driver's side. Okay. So I'm going to pull that fuse out. Yeah, that fuse is really difficult to pull out. But there it is. And you see you have to remove this little trim right here. Which is easy. You just kind of like lift it up. And you can pull this up like this. You have to do that first. You have to pull this up like that, and then pull this off, this trim up front here. All right, and then you'll be—you'll have more room to get at the fuse box. Just in Let's get this vanity cover off. We're gonna do a couple things with this uh, repair. We're gonna 
write stuff down, so I want number one vanity cover. This is a 10 millimeter. Like that. Vanity cover, number one. We might have had a resident at some point. Squirrel, probably. Yeah. yeah. Somebody moved in here at one point. Yeah, it's a mice. There's mice turds. Hopefully they didn't, they didn't damage anything, you know? get spark plugs out. Okay. Important to pay attention. These are long. Yeah, that one's going to be long also. So I'm going to write a little note on here. L. L. And that one's also long. number two on there. This is the second thing I removed. I don't think these spark plugs have ever been changed. So we have a short offset, short offset for the uh, coil. Looks like this. All right, so we got a uh, coil covers written in here. Uh, kind of want to label this. You can do like long, long here, maybe. I don't know, something like that. Let's see how that goes. This is another short one. Look like this. It all sets. And I should be able to kind of like pull up. Yeah, there you go. That's one. That's my stomach making that noise, just letting you know. Two, well, I got kind of burnt. What's happening here? Three, don't know. A little burnt. Four. So I bet you this cylinder, I, I bet you that I'm going to find out that this is the cylinder with the problems. Let's have a feeling. All right. Yep. Let's label these. I'm not really sure which is cylinder one, but I think it's that cylinder one. Uh, two. Three. 
Okay. Alright, so we got a 5.8 uh, spark plug socket. I'm gonna get on in here and We're gonna do a compression test on this, all the cylinders, and see uh, what values we get. I just wanna get a feel for what the engine is doing. And uh, when we do a compression test, also, yeah, we'll just do it separately. We'll do the uh, compression test by itself, and we'll do the uh, blow by test by itself, also. Or not, I don't know, I gotta think about it. Spark plugs. Not too bad. So they have a good temp on them still. Not the worst. There you go. Alright. Let's see what the pressure pressure is. Be careful with these tools. Can't stress this enough. Like before you stick one of these, oh, sorry, back you off a little. Before you stick one of these compression tests there, up inside your engine. Make sure that this what is going on, buddy. Make sure that, that this is uh, tight and not slipping. So just turn it like that. If it spins the hose right here. You're going to screw this down and you're not going to be able to take this out. So just make sure it's compressed properly. I can't stress this enough. Don't ask me how I know. I got burnt on one of these and it was like fighting with it for a couple days. I think I have a video of it. I'll link, I'll link to it for you so you can see how to get them out. With the fuel, we have the fuel disabled, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and check and see uh, what the compression is on the video. I mean, yeah, gotcha. All right, let's crank this a couple times and see what we get. So we got a uh, hundred and uh, what, 70, so that's pretty good. Got a really good, uh, can you see that? Did you see that? Uh, take a look. Uh, so we got 170, let's go, I'm gonna check them all, all across and all report back to you. So I don't think, uh, this is the order, right? We have, uh, okay, from uh, cylinder one, two, three, four. This is uh, spark plug number one, two, three, four, that's the order. And uh, nothing really stands out to me other than cylinder three. See how much uh, carbon that is right there. Uh, all the, the tips on the spark plugs are pretty good. They're really good spark plugs, actually. They're ir iridiums, so not bad. Uh, yeah, let's continue. So it's cylinder number two. We're at like, what, 190? Yeah, wow. Mm. I don't know, I'm sorry, that's like, uh, yeah, that's 192, 192 ish. Uh, it's cylinder number three. Looks like it's somewhere around a hundred and what? One ninety? Yeah, one eighty-nine. So it's looking good. 
So it's still cylinder number four. And we are at like 186. Yeah. Alright, so we're back at number one. And we're at like one. It's like 186 also on this. Yeah. It's pretty good. So we're on the passenger side of America, and uh, Honda makes this like access hole right here to uh, turn the uh, engine if you need to turn it. We're gonna need to remove this panel anyway, so we have these clips here. They'll pop off. They look they're just like this. They go like that. Pull them out. Let's get, get this hole bottom cover, engine cover off all the way around. Okay, you have to, you have to take both tires off. So looks like we got ourselves, uh, oops, sorry, you can see what's happening here. This is where we are. This looks like we have a Christmas tree fastener here. I think that's what that is. Like these are gonna be like the other one. Yeah, that's just one of those. Whoa. Ooh, it's like a 10 millimeter here, so we're gonna get that out. That's gonna be all the way in the corner. See where the light is? Right there. So this fastener in the corner is really annoying. So you gotta like clamp it down to spin it off. And uh, I don't know, let's see how that works. Good one hand for you. All right, you get the idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and fight with this off camera. So I like they kind of like mark shields uh, when I pull them off. Um, so this is again, this one was over. Yeah, sorry. Oh, this one's over. And this one's under. Draw a line. So a line here. Pretty much a square. Helps me line it up. Put it back together. Same thing here. Yeah, just keep things kind of easy. So uh, four-stroke engines. They have uh, four times they go through each time to complete a power cycle. Right. We need to get. So we have like a, a suction, we're going to pull the air fuel mixture in, compression, it goes up, power, the explosion of the uh, air fuel mixture, and we push the uh, byproducts of the combustion process out. That's a fourth stroke, right? And uh, we have this with a balloon on it, right? All we're going to do because we need to check and see if we're on the power the power stroke, right? That's the one when the uh, at top dead center on the power stroke. So that's like right at the very top when the cylinder goes up. And it's gonna ex it, as it goes up, it's compression. It's compressing the air and fuel mixture, right? And then it's gonna explode. You want to get top dead center on the piston when it's on the compression stroke, right? So that's gonna be why we need the balloon. Because we're going to turn the engine over, and we're going to look and see that for that balloon to get poofy. That's how we know we're at top dead center on the uh, compression stroke. Remember, there's two, there's two times it's going to be at top dead center, but you want the compression stroke. That's the one you want. Because we're going to check for a blow-by, and also this is the place we need to freeze the engine when we do the uh, teardown. So, yeah. Um, down here, right, we have a 19 millimeter socket, right, 19 millimeter socket with a, on a wrench. We're going to turn this, uh, uh, hmm, there's a, there's a direction we should go in. Uh, let me, let me think about this for a second. I need to see what direction the engine turns and I'm by myself, so I'm going to have to record a video of this. 
and I'll look at it and see uh, you know, what direction it turned. Watch the balloon. I'm going to turn the engine. I'm going to watch the engine. Uh, I'm going to see if that balloon. The balloon gives us a nice. Uh, starts to blow up. Alright, so. It's a rightsy tightsy kind of situation. Oh. Alright, perfect. Saw that? Alright, so now we're in the compression stroke, right? Going up. What we want to do now is take this out. All right, now we're touching a piston. Let's see. Let's get the top dead center on the compression strip. Oops, so fast. Okay, got to back up a little. So I'll go back, turn the engine the other way. Right there. Right there. That's going to be top dead center on the compression strip. So now, we're going to do a blow-by test. Let's see what values we get. Alright, so we're going to do a blow-by test. So we have shop air connected to one side, and we have a very, it's the same exact um, connector that we used, but just a little longer. All right. And when you do this, you want to turn this to the right. So, uh, I'm sorry, to the left. Right, left. Uh, sorry, pull it out. Pull it out and turn to the right. Slowly. And uh, you want to make sure that the uh, the difference between the two is, is minimal. So this is going to be the cylinder. So the difference in air pressure. All right, so you turn slowly. Already, we're already at a difference. We're gonna go all the way up to 100 on this side. So we're at 50. So we have serious blow-by going on here. It's going somewhere. All right. All right. So that's 70. Let's see. Seventy on the right in the cylinder, 100 on the left. So I, I can even hear it, it's, it's bubbling. Um, yeah, here, I can hear it. Look, I'll show you. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but. <laughs> Off you go. Can you hear that? Yeah, so that's how you know you have a blown head gasket. You can hear that just bubbling right there, okay? So, we know somewhere on cylinder one, we'll see it later on when we pull it apart, that that's the problematic cylinder, at least one of them. And uh, where the gasket is anyway. But that's crazy. Now listen. Yep, and you can go like this. Put your finger, see that? That's air pressure bu being built. So. All right, that's our first problematic cylinder. Yeah, cylinder two, same thing. Look at that. We've got a what, 62 maybe? 63, sorry. Out of 100. You can hear that, right? So, yeah, we, uh, we are doing pretty bad over here. <laughs> cylinder gaskets compromised with cylinder one and two, pretty badly. All right, we're on to something here. We have a difference now. 
Okay, so cylinder three, right? That one there. Look at that. We are at like, uh, what's that? Maybe like 34 or 33 out of 100? That's just insane. We knew that that cylinder was really compromised, right? There's no blow-by happening, so the blown gasket's not on here. But I think the rings, I believe the rings are shot. I mean, I don't know. Let's see. So, do we have air coming out the intake? One of those valves or... I don't know. Let's check the exhaust. Let's see what's happening back here. Hey, you got it. Yeah. See, it's got to be going somewhere. It's not here. I don't feel it here. All right? So... It's not coming out of here. Right? Uh, it's going to be going somewhere. I bet you it's... I have a feeling that a ring... The oil? Let's check the oil. Yeah, let's see what's happening. Can we hear it in here? Yep, that's it. So the ring, the rings, you hear the difference? Yeah, so we have uh, ring, the rings are compromised. But we got such a good compression value when we did our compression test, right? So either way, we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to do the rings on this car too. I knew that, but now I really know. We're on cylinder number four. And uh, what we have is uh, like a, uh, I would say like 72, 72 out of 100 on the blow-by, so this is pretty bad. And you can hear it bubbling. You hear that? Yeah, so it's bubbling the coolant. So we have blow-by pretty badly here. That's pretty bad. All right, so we know what we're working with. Definitely have to, we have a blown gasket for sure, right? So it showed you two ways to verify your blown gasket. We have a uh, blow-by pretty badly on cylinder uh, number, uh, number three. oil pan underneath looks immaculate. It's like this thing has never leaked oil ever, which is rare, you know? But I love it. And I'm gonna disturb that, and I hope I don't mess it up, because I hate oil pans. They drive me nuts. Either way, it doesn't look too much of a bad job. It looks easier than my Honda Civic, to be honest with you. So that's where we're at. We're at day zero. We're just kind of like figuring out what we're working with. And uh, next time we come back to this car, we're going to start pulling it apart.